Welcome to another episode of uh, Jay Leno's Garage. If you've been to this website before, you know we are huge Bugatti enthusiasts. And if you've been to the Bugatti webpage, you've seen this car. This is Pierre Veron's Type 37 Supercharged, Type 37A Supercharged Bugatti Grand Prix car. Uh, Pierre Veron uh, was a race car driver, uh, was in the French Resistance. Uh, it's just one of those classically uh, cool people of the 30s. He, he died for his country and he was a true hero. And uh, that's why they named this car after him. This is the Bugatti Grand Sport. Again, you saw us do this car. We did a road test on it, just an amazing automobile. And of course, Bugatti is one of those companies always trying to one-up itself. So that was the Grand Sport. This is the ultimate Bugatti. This is the Super Sport. You know, guys are always looking for more horsepower. You know how that is. Let's meet uh, John Hill. He is the uh, uh, marketing director, is that what it is? Yes, for uh, North and South America. North and South America for Bugatti. Well, right here we have probably $5 million worth of Bugattis, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so the, the Super Sport as it sits here is 3 million and the uh, Grand Sport 2.2, so a little bit over five. It's 3 million as it sits right here. This is just an engineering tour de force, these Bugattis. There's so much technology packed into every one of these cars. It's so much more forward. I mean, the technology in this car will someday obviously trickle down to other cars, but not for a while. What's the horsepower on this one? The, the Super Sport is 1,200 horsepower. 1,200 horsepower. You know, if you live in a hilly area like I do, you need that little extra oomph to get you up and over the crest of that hill. But uh, look at the grain in the uh, carbon fiber. I mean, I, I imagine it's a little bit done that way so you can see. Well, all super sports, the, the body is full carbon fiber. Right. You know, where the Veyron was carbon and aluminum, right. on the super sport it's full carbon. Now, you have the option of having that painted mm -hmm. or you can have it exposed like we see here. The, the upcharge to have it exposed is 300,000 euros, so about the cost of a Phantom to okay. have this finish. So are you telling me this is the natural color of the carbon fiber and that it's just clear coated? No, carbon is, is naturally black. Right. So the only way that we can, the only colors we can finish carbon in, uh, black, gray, and then there's a tinting that we were able to get this blue. Oh, I see. So this is a tinting in here. Yes. And then it has this clear coat over it. Yes. Wow. It's amazing to see in person. I mean, I'm sure it looks good on video, but you, to see it in person, the quality of the workmanship and the carbon fiber is amazing. How much lighter? Is it that much lighter? It's about 50 kilograms lighter. Okay. Uh, you know, there, there's some things that are done uh, first to increase the horsepower. We went with uh, four larger turbochargers. Right. Uh, and and also two additional fuel pumps. So where the Veyron has two fuel pumps, this one has four. Okay. There was also some significant work in the suspension. Uh, lateral acceleration on the Veyron was 1.24. This one is almost 1.4, just wow. under 1.4. I mean, this car so far exceeds even the average race car driver's capability, isn't it? I mean, there aren't many race cars that have this kind of power. And what is the top speed? The Veyron was 253. With the additional horsepower, this wow. is 268. Wow. All right. Zero to 60 is the same in right. the two cars, but right. you start to feel the, the increase in speed right. after 60. So zero to 100 miles per hour, this car is half a second faster. Wow. And, and that, how many seconds is that to, to, to 60? 2.48 to 60. Okay, 2.48 to 60. And 4.8 to 100. Wow. So this car gets to 100 faster than any super, most super cars get to 60, isn't it? Pretty yes. amazing. Pretty amazing, yeah. I mean, you've all seen the YouTube video of the McLaren F1, which I have, and the Bugatti, and McLaren takes off and takes about halfway down, and the Bugatti, and it passes. It's humiliating. <laughs> it's humiliating. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let's talk about the technology in this car, because it, it is so unbelievable. The, the amount of heat being generated, the amount of of radiators and whatnot you need to cool it and keep it running. I mean, we know it's a V16 or a W16, so correct? A W16, eight liter with four turbochargers. Right. And as I mentioned, the turbos are, are a little bit larger on, on the Super Sport than they are on the Grand Sport. Right. And by a W16, explain what that is, what that means to people. Well, it's, uh, you would see three banks of cylinders right. instead of two. Right. So you're able to compress the size of, of the engine by right. doing so. Right, right. Okay, very nice. And this is, this is your spoiler, this comes up? 
Yeah, the, the, the rear wing comes up at 115 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. That's another difference between the two cars. Uh, on, on the Veyron, it came, it came up at 137. Right. But because you're accelerating so much faster in this car, it comes up at 115. And then you're configured for speeds up to 233. So if a cop knows that, and he sees this up, well. Well, you can say you put it up manually. You, you, oh, that's right, you put it up manually. Yes. Of course, of course, of course. And of course, your engine is open here. As you can see, there's no glass or anything in here. That's obviously to get that tremendous amount of heat out of there. Exactly. How many radiators are in this car? There are 11 radiators. 11 uh, radiators. Again, same as the Veyron, but when we walk to the front of the car, you'll mm -hmm. see that what we've done is open the car up a little bit more in the front end so we can draw in more heat. The horseshoe grill on the Super Sport is a little bit larger. And then we've started with openings underneath the headlights I see. to capture air. You'll also see a little bit more of a raking in this, uh, in right. this here to direct air up. And then the, uh, uh, this opening is a little bit larger than on the Grand Sport. And of course the horseshoe grill symbolizes because in, in Toro Bugatti was the horseman. Yes. Pure sang, pure blood, that's what he liked. I mean, when you see Molsheim back in the 20s and 30s, it looked like the most exciting place in the world. He had his house here, the factory was next to the house, they had horses, and it's wonderful to see the tradition continuing to this day. Uh, what other technology things can we discuss here? How about brakes? How many piston? Uh... Well, it's, it's eight piston on the front, six right. in the rear. Okay. It's in their carbon ceramic. Right. Uh, and I think there's only one uh, disc uh, larger than what we right. see on this car. But what I mean is it's not an off-the-shelf item somebody could no. buy. It's built specifically for the Viron. That's correct. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Let's see what else. Let's take a look at the interior. I guess that's more of a sports seat. Is that a little different seat than the others? Uh, yeah, this is a sport seat. There, we actually have two versions available. There's a sport and then a sport comfort. This is the uh, sport comfort, so the bolsters are a little bit lower. And as you can see, the dashboard, fairly simple because that's what people like. You know, all these buttons and whatnot drive you crazy. You've got an analog clock and, you know, obviously stereo, air conditioning, all those kind of things. Uh, what other features, John? Well, it's, uh, it, it, as you mentioned, it's a really clear design right. uh, or clean design, but it's got a reverse camera that displays in the rear, rear view mirror, uh, park distance control, heated seats, you know, the air conditioning, iPod hookup in the center console. Right. Um, you'll see some changes in the design, uh, slight changes. For example, the steering wheel in this car is more of a sport wheel right. with a textured leather. Okay. Same on the uh, shift knob. The center console is carbon fiber mm -hmm. as well. And we'll. We can produce it in any material you like right. if you like leather, but because right. of the uh, uh, the carbon fiber on this car. So the first Veyron was built when? When? Was that 2000 what? The first deliveries were in 2006. Okay, 2006. Uh, what other changes have happened technically? Like, what have you learned from the first cars to these cars? What's, what's different? In Obviously, you've got more horsepower in this, but yes. like things that owners say, gee, I'd like this differently, I'd like that differently. What are some of the items? You know, a lot of it was in design features, mm -hmm. uh, optional items that customers came and asked us for. You know, we started off with stitching and cording, some of the, some of the basic things. Uh, over the years, we've developed illuminated door sill plates, right. for example, if you want your, uh, your wife's name, for example, or your name. Uh, but technically, the cars are basically the same. Basically the same, and over the years, as a, if a car comes in for service, mm -hmm. we bring it up to the latest production right. spec. So, so if there has been something that's phased in technically over the years, the earlier cars are brought up yeah. to that specification. I mean, what I'm getting here is that these cars are basically designed right from the first day. You know, when you go back to the 60s and the 70s, a lot of supercar manufacturers, as an owner, you would be the R&D guy. You would drive it, and when it, when it broke down, you'd call the factory, hey, thank you for telling us that. We'll fix it on the upcoming models, you know. The, the great thing uh, about uh, Ferdinand Peake, is that how you say his name? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I mean, he is uh, one of my heroes, like Ferdinand Porsche. In fact, he's a grandson, isn't he, or great-grandson? Uh, grandson. Grandson. Uh, the idea of pushing things to the ultimate, making uh, you know, the ultimate car you can build. I mean, when he designed this, uh, when he came up with this idea originally, he said he wanted 1,000 horsepower, and engineer said it's impossible, and he, well, go back and do it. You just have to do it, it's simple as that. I mean, this is, this is their version of going to the moon, okay? This is the moon shot. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. And, because he kind of willed this car to be done. Yes. And uh, they got it done. And engineering wise, technology wise, it's just an amazing automobile. Uh, the downside is there's nothing you can do on this car yourself. 
There's, there's nothing for the, there's really no owner maintenance no. you can do. No, you, <laughs> you wouldn't want to try. You can't even check the, can you check the, how do you check the oil? Yes, it's, uh, it's actually on your side. Is there a dipstick? Yes. Oh, I would love to check the oil on it. Let's see. I assumed it was an electronic push button deal. Well, we can check it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Okay. There you are. Oh, this is your oil here, not your gas. No, fuel is on the other side. Okay. Yes. Okay. There we go. Very nice. There we go. You know, my Bugatti over there, that one, that uh, I have an electric fuel pump in it. Yes. But I keep the mechanical fuel pump on display. It has a glass bowl. And French gasoline used to be red. And I would fill it with grape juice. And I would take it to car shows. I'd tell people that ran on wine. And then I would unscrew it and I would drink it. And people would go, <laughs> <laughs> So, wow, you can actually check the oil in your Bugatti. Well, I am. And what is, what is this used for oil? Is it some exotic, uh, or is it just a Mobile One? What is it? No, it's, it's a special oil developed just for Bugatti. Okay, so again, you have to buy it from Bugatti. Actually, uh, you, you can buy it from us, yeah. but we suggest that you take it to the dealership and, and okay. allow them to do the work. And how much would a quart of that oil be? I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person to ask that. Well, I, I, yeah. well, I guess they don't ask. If you can afford this car, you don't ask no. about it. No, you just, no, you just bring Again, this is another whole lifestyle. I mean, I have this wonderful garage with all these things. Whatever you think I have, well, I didn't compare. This is another whole class of car, class of automobile. This is about as close to space shuttle technology as you can get. I mean, the wheels, the tires, the amount of engineering that goes in to make a car run at 268 miles an hour. It's, it's pretty amazing. Well, and, and you mentioned the wheel design. That is, that's one thing that can't be modified on a Supersport because even the wheel design participates in the cooling of this car. Right. So, you know, from the openings in the front to the wheel design to draw the air out, uh, that's one, one design thing that cannot be changed. And this Michelin tire, I don't imagine that fits any other automobile, does it? No. This it's is made specifically for the Grand Sport. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Let's meet one of the heroes of this car, one of the engineers, Jan Schuldenberg. Am I saying that right? Yes, it is. Close enough. Close yes. enough. Yes. Close enough. Now, you, you've been in this project since the beginning? Uh, after, I start after the design freeze. After so. the design, okay. And tell us some of the challenges of getting that extra. The car originally went, what, 251 or 250, whatever it was. You've got another 15 miles. That doesn't sound like a lot, another 15 miles per hour. But when you're getting up over 150, over 200 miles an hour, everything is sort of cubed. You need that much more horsepower to go that much faster. What were some of the challenges of getting this car to go 268? So just 200 horsepower is more will not make this job. Right. So we must optimize everything, and it was a hard job. The car wasn't in a good condition before. So to optimize everything, find new ideas. So the significant thing is the air intake. Okay. So we need more air. John told already you have four fuel pumps. If you right. have more fuel, you need more air. Right. So the Naka Dots is made for spaceships. They had a better ram air effect. It's better aerodynamics. So you see that on the roof to get more air in. And then we must also uh, optimize the co completely cooling system. Right. We generate 200 horsepower more heat in the, gen in the radiators. So they have a different angle and a different location. So right. also we m move some radiators to stay here in, in the rear. We, we move the uh, radiator for the rear differential. Right. On the grand sports, they are side by side. So we take the lower one away under the exhaust. So we have a better efficiency for the transmission and also for the rear differential. And we optimize also the aerodynamics. There's a double diffuser in the rear. Right. And how many gallon gas tank? It's 25. Huh? 25 gallons. 25 gallons. So at 268 miles an hour, how long would it take to empty 25 gallons? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. <laughs> Eight minutes. Oh, that's, I mean, that's a fire hose. So, I mean, but 268 miles an hour is not even logical. There are two keys, right? When you're going to do a high speed run, isn't there a second key? Yes, this is the uh, high speed key. <laughs> so, uh, it's sterling silver. It gets placed on the uh, yeah. floor next to the seat. Okay. Now, can you do that while you're driving, or do you pull over and insert this? You must turn it if you're still standing before. So the, the reason is normally you go in uh, handling position and to generate the high right. speed function, 
all the things that uh, we lower the car twice, yeah. we open flaps in the front, we bring the bing down to a high-speed right. configuration and the very important thing, we must check the whole system, yeah. especially the tire pressure control system, right. something damaged on the tire as a function of a lock. Wow, okay. And what, what pressure do you run on these tires? It's, it's just standard 33, 34 pounds? It's, it's 45 pounds. 40, oh, 45, yes. that high, 45 pounds of pressure. All right, very good. Let's see, what else? Okay, it's 25 gallons of gas. Yes. Okay, very nice. Runs on uh, 93 octane, which, uh, which is difficult to find in California. Right. So you can run on... 91 uh, octane. We can either adjust it for 91 or you can run 100 octane. I see, I see, very good, very good. Well, it, I mean, you can run 91. You just can't. You just lose a few horsepower. Maybe. You don't. Yeah, so you wouldn't damage it, right? Adjust the timing, right? Well, there's some adjustments that we make on the car, oh, so I you see. won't damage it. I see. Very good. Of course, this is the passenger side here. Very nice. Here's a dumb question: Does Super Sport mean the same in English and German and French, or is that Super Sport because it's an American model? No, it's Super Sport worldwide. Okay. Okay. So how do you say super sport in German? Super sport. Yeah, same, exactly. Same. So that's German right there. So I'm speaking a little German right now. Super sport. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. And is there a, a Bugatti service center in the Los Angeles area? Yes. We have, uh, well, we have three dealerships right. in California, and then we have a full technical center in Westlake, right. where we could essentially rebuild a car in Westlake if we ever needed to. Well, that's the great thing about living in LA. No matter what car or motorcycle thing you're into, it's here, whether it's Bugatti, McLaren, Honda, Yamaha, whatever you have it, it's right here. So if you, if you live in Burbank, well, it's right up the street in Westlake and get your car serviced. Pretty amazing. What is the warranty that comes with one of these? I don't even know. On the Super Sport, it's three years, right. which uh, also includes three years of maintenance mm -hmm. and 30,000 miles. Oh, okay. okay. Our average driver drives about uh, 1,500 miles a year, right. but we have had owners who've done 10,000 plus per year. Wow, very good. What is the highest mileage Viron? Is there one out there? Do you know? It'd probably be one of our cars that right. we've used for events. Uh, I'd have to guess 50,000 plus yens 50, in, in miles. And no, uh, and still no problems? Right? No. I mean, we, we've had no serial issues with the car. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the, uh, the testing that we go through, the quality testing, you know, first in development, but then also at production, uh, the service history has been outstanding. How does this hood open? Is there any? Uh... Yes, it's uh, just a lever inside here on the footwell. Okay, there you go, look at that. So, you go on, on a trip, you pack a couple of Wendy's double burgers in there and you're all set. You're not gonna, uh, that's pretty much, there's your luggage. Honey, we're going on a trip. Can't pack any more than that. That's pretty cool. And what is this here, you got a first aid kit? Yeah, a small first aid kit. Uh, generally, there's a safety jacket that comes in there as well. And there is a, I assume it's a run flat design, correct? Yes. Okay. And is there an air compressor or something if you get a flat? What do you do? I guess uh, the, the run flats are good for about 50 miles. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Just push down. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thanks for bringing it by the garage here. Anytime somebody shows up with $5 million, more than $5 million, this is three, and how much is that? 2.2. 2.2. Pretty amazing. Okay, let's, uh, I think it's time to take it for a drive. There you are. I didn't get the silver key. <laughs> I'm here with Butch Leitzinger, and he is a Bugatti test driver, and we're going to take this out on the road and see how it goes. Because let's be honest, you don't send an idiot like me out in a $3 million car unless you have a professional person with you. Let's get in this thing. All righty. Boy, oh, you sit lower than I would have imagined. It can be adjusted uh, where you actually where you mount the seats. Oh, I see. Okay. And, uh, the key's already on. Okay. Oh, so just uh, put the, there you go. Okay. Now, is that done at the factory, or can I hit the button here and bring it up? Uh, it's at, at, at the factory. Okay, so each one of these is set up for that particular owner. That's okay. Right. And you just put it in. Where is my... Uh... For, for automatic, you just uh, knock it to the right. And it comes up on the uh, dashboard. Oh, I see. Yeah, there you go. And All if right. you want to go to paddles, you just touch either right. one. Right, okay. And you got your paddles here. Let's see how she goes.
you know, for the first minute or two, you can almost fool yourself and you think you're in a regular car until you step on the gas. Three million dollars. <laughs> I have to admit, I like to do a little bit of maintenance myself and do some of the stuff myself. And there's nothing you can do to this, can you? Not really, no. no. It's, 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 it's not really a tinkerer's car, you know? And you can't uh, even near the power plant. <laughs> no. But it is amazing how they've managed to get this much technology in a road-going vehicle. Is it more than you need? Well, duh, but still pretty amazing. Is there a sport setting or is the standard setting always sport on this one? It, it is, yes. Okay, so there's no there's no sport setting for it. Just, the, yeah. the only thing is if you press this button, yeah. it goes into handling mode, okay. which, which lowers the entire car. I see. Uh, but makes it a little bit vulnerable on the, on the street like this. So now she's shifting automatically, so if I... It moves along pretty nicely. Yeah, a little bit of trash control came on right there. Yeah, you can feel that. You know, there's nothing finicky about this car. It doesn't seem peaky or cammy or any of those kind of things like uh, a supercar would have um, not that long ago. It drives perfectly normal until you put your foot in it. And oh my God. Wow. Bugatti is probably the most successful ultra supercar company. I mean, as good as the McLaren F1 was and is, financially it was not a success because they couldn't sell enough of them. This one seems to have gotten the reputation and the handling and uh, the reliability that people are not afraid to, uh, to spend this kind of money. And it's 1,200 real horsepower all the way through. You know, a lot of guys that build cars, Corvettes and whatnot that have 1,000 horsepower, I'm one of them. And the engine is designed for 1,000 horsepower, but the rest of the car isn't necessarily designed to handle it. I'm not sure. The fastest we've had my Tornado at the test track is a little over 150, and it's starting to walk around. So this thing goes 268 miles an hour! You know, the amazing thing about this car is it just, it just does everything so well, it's like you think, I'd like to be over there, ah! and you're there! You don't really get a sensation of speed, I mean, you, you feel it when you're accelerating, but 100 miles an hour feels like 35 or 40. Perhaps it's my imagination, or I've driven a lot of cars since I drove the last one. This does feel more planted to me. It does feel a little, well, sportier, I guess. Uh, but that could just be my mind playing tricks on me. It's very comfortable, it's very fast, and very expensive. That's not, I mean, that's shifting at 5,500. I mean, it's, jeez. I mean, the, the pull is just impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's really impressive. I probably want to raise that front end up right here. Sure, yep. Pretty amazing, thanks. Well thanks, thanks. Pretty amazing car. Well, what a thrill that is. The trick is getting out gracefully. How many times do you like to get to take a $3 million car out? So I want to thank Bugatti for bringing this by and bringing their technical guys by and explain this to us. You know, this is just a fantasy car, and that's what it is. But it's for some people, it's a fantasy come true. So if the ultimate car guy, this is the ultimate car. See you next week.